In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the cash paid for income taxes when you're preparing the operating section of the statement of cash flows for a company that uses the direct method. So to get cash paid for income taxes, you're going to start with income tax expense. And you're going to get this from the company's income statement. Okay, But then you have to look and see if there was a change in income tax payable over the prior period. So you would go to the balance sheet from this period and then look at the balance sheet from the last period and compare the two. And so if the income tax payable decreased over the prior period, then you would add that to income tax expense when you're getting cash paid for income taxes. Okay. Now also, if you if you, you might have never heard of this term before, if you haven't, don't worry too much. You, I've got some videos on it, but there's a thing called a deferred tax liability. Uh, this is typically uh, recognized, for example, uh, because you use accelerated depreciation for tax purposes, but maybe straight line for financial reporting purposes. So you have this thing called a deferred tax liability. And if there's a decrease in a deferred tax liability, that is also going to get added to income tax expense. And conversely, if there is an increase in income tax payable or an increase in deferred tax liability, those are gonna be subtracted from income tax expense, okay? And then related to this concept of deferred tax liability, there's this other thing called a deferred tax asset. I've just abbreviated it DTA here for deferred tax asset, and then we've got DTL as deferred tax liability. Uh, so if there's an increase in deferred tax assets for the company, then we are going to add that to income tax expense. And conversely, if there is a decrease in deferred tax assets, then we're going to subtract that from income tax expense and getting cash paid for income taxes. I know that's a lot to take in. If you've never heard of a deferred tax liability or deferred tax asset before, I have videos on those, so I encourage you to check them out. But let me give you a simple example where we'll just focus on the basic parts uh, for this sample problem that I've been working in the prior, prior videos for the direct method. So let's go. We've got our comparative balance sheet here. Okay, so we've got our comparative balance sheet. We've got an income statement. And then we've been working on the operating section for a statement of cash flows. And now we need to know the cash payment for income taxes. Okay, we have to figure out what that is. And so what, what are we going to do here? We're just going to follow our formula. And it says that we start with income tax expense. We're going to get that from the income statement. We have income tax expense of $8,000. Okay, so I'm just going to write 8000 right here. Okay. Now we need to figure out what happened with income tax payable over the prior period. Okay, so here we go. Here's our liability income tax payable. We started at a thousand a December 31st 2021 balance sheet date uh, and then we went to zero right over December 31st 2022. So we went down by a thousand. So we have a decrease in income tax payable. So there's a decrease in income tax payable of a thousand dollars. Okay. So we're going to add that to income tax expense. If you think about it, it makes sense. Why would income tax payable decrease? It decreased because we owed some income tax before and we're just we're just now paying it. Okay? So that should be part of the cash paid for income taxes. We're going to add that to income tax expense. Now, because I wanted to give you a simple example, if you look here, you will not see any deferred tax liability or deferred tax assets. We're just going to focus on this. So now, if we add this together, we've got 8000 of income tax expense plus that $1,000 decrease in income tax payable. So that's going to give us cash paid for income taxes of $9,000. Now we actually have enough information, if you've been watching some prior videos, we now have enough information to finish out our operating section for our subtotal for uh, net cash from operating activities. Because we have cash receipts. We just had cash received from customers. We did this in a prior video. Then we, did, then we did cash payments to suppliers we got from cost of goods sold. Uh, wages, we converted to cash paid to employees. And then we had cash uh, paid for interest. Okay, And then now we just did uh, cash paid for income taxes. So we take all the cash receipts, which is just one, 440000 Then we subtract the 70000 the 120, the 12, and then the 9 that we just calculated. And that gives us $229,000, which is our cash uh, from operating activities for this company. So this is basically like if we had converted, then if we had done that income statement on a cash basis, and so for the regular income statement, it was a accrual basis, we get the net income of $32,000. But if we had done the income statement on a cash basis, uh, we would have ended up with a profit of $229,000. And again, just to come back, that means we actually paid 
uh, d d in terms of what we're doing here with the income taxes, we paid $9,000 cash for income taxes. And then when we look at all these other cash payments and we look at the cash receipts, the, the cash flow from operating activities for this company for this prior year was $229,000.